Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. I'm Jordan Kanigi and if you guys are new to this channel, we're coming at you with a little educational piece here today. This is what we do at Addicted Fishing. We come at you with entertaining, inspirational, and educational pieces every day on YouTube of all walks of life and all kinds of fishing all over the world. So if you guys like fishing, go down here and hit that little bell notification and hit that subscriber button and stay tuned with us. We're gonna go over some stuff today about trout fishing. Today we're gonna go over the ins and outs of the five best things that I think there are to catch trout out there. So stay tuned, we're coming at you right now. So trout fishing is one of the most popular hobbies for fishing in the world, or in the United States most often. Um, you can find trout from north to south, east to west, across the entire United States. And again, in a lot of places in the world, you can go out and catch trout. So what I have here next to me are my top five favorite things to use to catch trout. If you go to the river or the lake or the pond with these things, guaranteed one of them will create success for you out there while you're fishing. So I'm gonna start from right to left here. I'm gonna go over from the, probably the most delicate and the most sensitive things that you can go to for, for fishing for these trout that's not gonna scare them. And then we'll go to the most aggressive and, and some of the more outlandish ways to catch them in a little more aggressive ways that, to get these bigger and better fish to bite as well. So first things first, what I have here next to me are flies. There's a lot of different flies obviously out there that you could use to catch a trout, but what we have here is just a little bladed woolly bugger. These are something that you could troll, you could cast behind a float, you could either use a water bobber or you could use a piece of weight and just cast and retrieve. Any little method works when using these flies. And if you guys want to see more options and more examples of how to use these techniques, be sure to go down to our YouTube channel here and search some of these techniques, whether it be fishing flies under a float or Rapalas or these power eggs or the things that I'm going to show you here. But today we're just going to go over the five best things and why I think they are the best. So flies are probably number one. It's the most natural, it's the most delicate, and it's the easiest way to fish. You put the fly on the end of your line and you get it out in the lake or the river and the fish come to you basically. Um, but the flies, these woolly buggers, any kind of natural mayfly stimulator, any kind of thing that you're going to be identifying to those trout of something natural that they eat around their, their, their area of where they live is going to be key. Jumping right into the next thing that's probably the second most natural or even first really, this one's actually alive, is some kind of night crawler or some kind of bait. There's mealworms, there's all kinds of different things out there, but the good old fashioned night crawler will never fail you out on the lake. Whether or not you're fishing it from the bottom aired up or you're fishing it under a float suspended in the water column, live bait and worms are always gonna be probably the number one thing you wanna go to the lake with. If you don't like touching squirmy things, there's a lot of different techniques and a lot of different artificial worms and rubber worms and things that you can use that you can add scent to that allow you to use that natural presentation of a, a night crawler or something that no normally exists in those lakes or ponds but not have to touch something alive and, and messy like these, these worms here. So number two has definitely gotta be the worms. Going along the bait line onto our third thing is gonna be something artificial in bait. And what I have here is any kind of power bait or rubber egg setup. Um, which I have a few different ones here. I have this Berkeley Power Bait here, and this is just kind of a doughy, kind of Play-Doh scented, glittery material that is actually scented to the different kind of feed that these, these fish are actually fed when they're being raised in a hatchery or in, in a trout farm. They actually feed on a lot of different things like this, so it keys into that natural feeding habit that all these fish already have from where they were born or where they come from. If you're going for more wild fish, you might want to go into the realm that I have here next to it, which is more of an artificial uh, or more of a rubbery, excuse me, technique of fishing these different um, artificial bait setups. So this is a power egg. This is just a rubber egg. Little, the one side is a soft kind of power bait material. The other side is a rubbery, more dense material. But it's something that's not gonna come apart as easy as that power bait. Because the power bait, you actually have to form your own little bait and get it onto your hook, which is not as effective as just hooking through these artificial eggs like this, or these next ones down, which is a shrimp flavor, because I added it, is the addicted steelhead eggs. These work really, really well as well because they're really good colors. You can go through a different variety of our colors. You can add your own scent to them. And it's just another play off of this artificial bait that works really well for any kind of stalker trout or any wild trout any, anywhere you're gonna be in the world. So, skipping off of that, off of the third thing, we're gonna go right into one of my favorites and that's the spinner or any kind of hardware, spinner or spoon. 
What I have here next to me is a big old mess of spinners and spoons. I have uh, a couple different ones here. This is what we call a cast master. Cast masters are extremely effective. You fish them a little bit differently and they go into the spoon realm. So the spoons are gonna be fished a different method. And again, you guys can find these techniques and these methods by going down to our YouTube channel again. So the spoons are one thing, but then there's spinners as well. And spinners are probably one of the more effective and more entertaining ways to fish for these trout. You're not just sitting in your lawn chair watching your bobber out in the middle of the lake. You're actually casting, retrieving, and being very active in fishing and, and hunting for the fish at that rate. So any kind of hardware, all different sizes and all different colors are gonna work well. You can use rooster tails, which we have here. These are a Yakima bait rooster tail. You have the blue fox spinners. You have any kind of spoon variation. You have the cast masters. Keeping that realm in between a size two and a size four is really important. You don't wanna to go too big for these trout because you'll oversize it and you'll end up spooking them or they won't be able to bite it themselves if they're too small of a trout. But if you do go bigger, at times it can key in on some of those bigger fish. So do remember that. But number four, and probably my favorite, are the hardware or some kind of spinner technique that's gonna get down, get in that fish's face, and create an aggressive bite, which is a lot of fun on these ultralight rods that you're gonna be using. So, moving on from the spinners and the hardware into something a little bit different, and one of my favorite techniques for catching big, big fish is a Rapala, or any kind of, of, of rattler or crankbait setup. These can be fished in a variation of ways. You can cast them and retrieve them. You can troll them behind the boat, flat lined with no weight. You can add weight and get them down in the water column and get them in front of those fish. But any form of Rapala, whether it be like a tiger stripe, whether it be the, the trout colored one, or one of my favorite, just the shad, all these work very, very well for these fish because they have a very sporadic action. They encourage a really aggressive bite and they work well in all kinds of different variations. Again, whether you be casting them, whether you be trolling them, fishing out of a boat or anything along those lines. So the Rapalos are number five on my list for top baits for trout. And so do not forget them. Each one of these things guys works just as well as the other given the right circumstance. There's no one method in fishing that's gonna outfish everything always. Having a good variety of stuff in your box, having your top five techniques and fishing them either from the bottom of the lake or on a suspended float setup or trolling behind a boat or a kayak or a canoe if you have the, the luxury of having something like that is gonna make you more effective. So having multiple techniques, making sure you take each of them with you to the river and staying effective and using them all is what's gonna help you guys catch more fish. So last but not least, we're gonna go over the most important part of this whole setup is how you actually get this stuff out in the lake, and that is your fishing rods. It's really important in trout fishing to have at least more than one rod. If you wanna be a one trick pony and stick to that one variation of fishing, more power to you. But what I like to do is at least have two, sometimes maybe three rods with me when I go to the lake. That way I can cover those different styles of fishing. I can fish my different baits and my different lures and be able to effectively fish the entire lake rather than just throwing something on the bottom and waiting until I wanna go home and catch fish or not. So the three setups that I have here is one that fishes from the bottom. Each one of these rods is an Okuma ultralight trout rod. You can use any sort of, of model or, or brand out there, but having an ultralight rating is very important. You want something that has sensitivity, but is also really flexible so that you can cast some of these light setups. Um, but again, you want a lighter rod as well so that you can have fun fighting these fish because sometimes they're not that big. Sometimes they are that big and it's a really good time on these rods. So what I have on each of these is a 3000 series reel with a braided line, anywhere from 10 to 20 pound test on the braided line. I like to go with the braid because it has no stretch and has a lot of sensitivity. You can add a fluorocarbon bumper to that so that you don't have that visible line to those, those sensitive sight trout sometimes. Um, but you wanna have the three setups and what that is is the two to six pound rod, seven to eight feet long, and 3000 series reel braided line. And one that I have set up is for the bottom. I'm gonna be fishing subsurface from the bottom with a half ounce lead on the bottom of the lake with a hook set up floating up above the structure on the bottom, which is very effective. The next one over for also for fishing bait is gonna be the float setup. And this float setup is a little bit different. Same idea to fish bait, it's just a sliding float goes up and down my braided line. I have a bobber stop up above it to stop that line from going in and out. All the way down to my three foot leader. Again, down to a worm, power bait, any one of the three or the five things that I've shown you here, other than the hardware. You're not gonna wanna use any kind of spinner or anything on that bobber setup. And then last but not least is the most active and most fun is the casting setup. I have this with a 10 pound braid so that it can cast really far. 
Um, and then also a cast master on here. And these cast masters are extremely effective. You guys saw us fishing in a lot of the different tutorials and a lot of the, the, the addicted lifes that we have using these cast masters. And they're some of my favorite. But you want to have your hardware rod, you want to have your subsurface float rod, and then you want to have your bottom fishing rod. And having at least one of three of these, or excuse me, two of three of these is going to make you a lot better angler and make you a lot more effective out there on the lake. We hope that this helped you guys a little bit today. We've covered a lot of different things and it's kind of cramming it into your brain, but go back, watch this video over again, drop a comment below with which one of your favorite techniques these are. If either one of them or if all of them are your favorite, I know there's certain ones here that I go to first, but I want to hear it from you guys, which one is your favorite out of the top five techniques that I've chosen here. If you guys had liked what you saw today, be sure to drop a like, comment below with that question, and you guys be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification to stay fishy, and we'll see you out there on the lake.